first things first, Iowa and UConn's final four game that happened on Friday was ESPN's most watched basketball game ever, including men's, women's, professional, and collegiate. Like, this was crazy. It was their most watched ever for ESPN. And then the championship game between Iowa and South Carolina that happened yesterday was the most watched basketball game ever in five years on ABC's network. So this was huge for women's basketball. And of course, that one includes the professional or collegiate as well from both men or women. So I want to give a special shout out to the women's basketball, bro. They've been slowly restoring the game that I love, bro. I'm loving that I'm seeing this. Uh, You see the toughness. You see them battling against each other. You see a lot of fundamentals. You see great coaching. This is all stuff that I grew up on when when I first started watching basketball, when I first started playing basketball. I loved watching basic fundamentals and seeing guys make the right pass, seeing guys take the right shot, create a play or or run a play, I should say, run a play and get people open, get an easy bucket off the play. Look at all the opportunities that happen from this one play that you ran. This is the basketball that I enjoy watching. So uh, I loved what happened um, with, with you know, the Iowa game and South Carolina, the championship. And then I also loved um, the the UConn and, and um, who, who did they play? Oh, Iowa, UConn and Iowa as well. But, you know, the South Carolina and, and USC, all of these games was dope, bro. It, w- it was really, really cool to me. But... Most importantly, I think this recruiting class of 2020 will probably go down as the class that changed women's basketball forever. And I know there's a lot of greats that happened and that done played the game before this core group of women's then came in and really, you know, completely dominated and and exposed women basketball to another level. But at the same time, then they capitalized on having social media. They capitalized on being able to watch these games on a large network, being able to watch these games in a primetime slot on ABC or ESPN. Because a lot of the teams that were in the WNBA or these historic college basketball teams for women, they didn't have the platform to be able to showcase their talent. You see people talk about it now where they're saying, There used to be tournament games being ran inside of hotels, hotel gyms. The locker room was was uh, the, the, the lobby area in a restroom and stuff like, you know, this is a huge evolution for this. And, you know, I think social media has added to this. Obviously, the networks of giving these women a platform to showcase their talent and, and they've capitalized on it. So this recruiting class of 2020. This is huge for them, man, and and I'm loving it here. And and they did not disappoint when they got on the big stage and really got the chance to show everybody what they were about. I'm I'm loving that we've seen them actually play good basketball instead of people making jokes of how bad they were or they didn't do this, they didn't do this like the men. People were on the flip side of, damn, they play way better than the men's from what we see. (laughs) And, And I'm one who is in high favor of that, like, the championship game that we just watched the other day, I doubt the men's game is going to compete with that. I doubt it. Between Purdue and UConn, I don't think it's going to be up there on this level of excitement and all of that because going to Iowa and South Carolina, Iowa, they obviously lost the game. South Carolina won. Um, congrats to Dawn Staley. She won 87 to 75. And this was an amazing game all around. Um, when you look at each half that happened in the game, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, it was always a bang to end the quarter. It was always something exciting that happened. There was constant runs that was going on, constant lead changes that was putting teams in position to either stand tall or fall short. And this is what you've seen. It ultimately just came down to a defensive game. And I think South Carolina, because they played such great defense this entire game, that's what ultimately gave them the edge in terms of winning this ball game. You got to give kudos to Raven Johnson. She did her thing. You got to give kudos to Car- Camila Cardosa. She was huge on the offensive glass this entire game. She was huge on the defensive glass as well, getting a lot of block shots and all of these different things. But ultimately, the thing that that really hurt Iowa was the fact that when Caitlin Clark wasn't touching the ball and she wasn't scoring, 
the usual suspects to help her out being Kate Martin um, and the other the other guard. I can't remember her name, not Gabby, but the other guard. She's a shooter. They weren't really knocking down shots. And ultimately, this is what kind of hurt Iowa when it came to can they pull back from this eight point deficit? Can they pull back from this 12 point deficit? It's like if Kaylin Clark isn't getting a lot of shots off and she got some shots off, but they were highly contested. Again, Raven Johnson did a hell of a job guarding her, but you know, it's hard for Kaylin Clark to do it all on her own when she's had help all the way up to this point from her, her supporting cast. I mean, and then you got to factor in Camila Cardoso was in the paint and that's a huge force to stop. Six, seven, grabbing boards, good body control, got good post moves. That's hard to stop. So, you know, hey, it, it was a great game all around. You know, I, I think the better team did end up winning and that better team being South Carolina. But I love what this is doing for women's basketball. I love what it did for women's basketball. And this, this changed a lot of people's mind in terms of are these women games going to be entertaining? Because now it's going to flood over to the WNBA. You got Angel Reese going to the WNBA. Paige is going to the NBA. Kaylin Clark, obviously. You got so many stars going to the WNBA, entering the draft. And now you give people something to look forward to on that main stage of the professional level for women's basketball. The only thing that needs to change now is women's basketball needs to start paying them more because these other leagues are going to try and take the talent that's supposed to go to the WNBA.